question one from the BMAT 2014 paper, section three. And we're given this statement. There is no such thing as dangerous speech. It is up to people to choose how they react. We have to explain the reasoning behind this statement, argue to the contrary and that there can be instances of dangerous speech. And finally, to what extent should a society put limitations on speech or text that it considers threatening? Now, before we delve into the first part of the question, I always find it good to just look at the key terms, highlight them, just clarify what they mean, because that means you don't contradict yourself going forward and you actually know and it ensures you're actually answering the right question. So, what is dangerous speech that they talk about? I would personally say that dangerous speech is speech that incites violence or hatred. So this doesn't mean things like verbal abuse because that directly causes harm. Um, dangerous speech is speech that indirectly causes harm by inciting another person. As for how they react, I feel like this suggests that words don't have any power on their own. Language is neutral and it's really up to the audience as to how they react, whether um, the language is deemed dangerous or not. So why would anyone support this statement then? What would their reasoning be? So I think one way you could argue about it is because sometimes innocuous things, very simple, non-harmful pieces of speech become dangerous speech, but only because it's interpreted as such by the audience. So can you think of an example where something innocuous is interpreted as dangerous speech? I think one example is the song Helter Skelter by the Beatles and its role in the Manson murders. So this is a song about a circus ride. A Helter Skelter is a circus ride. Um, Paul McCartney um, wrote it. But Charlie Manson in California listened to this song and thought that it was actually about an impending race war. And this spurred him on to commit these horrific Manson murders. And thus, this perfectly innocuous speech about a circus ride became dangerous speech purely because of the audience choosing to react in a certain way. And here we have a Helter Skelter. Nothing really about a race war. So now that you understand the statement a bit better and reasons behind it, now have a go at writing an introductory paragraph of your own and then I'll show you what I've done. So this is what I've done. Dangerous speech is often defined by whether the speech incites violence and hatred towards others. As a result, the belief that there's no such thing as dangerous speech hinges us on whether words in the road have power or are they merely a, a collection of sounds or squiggles on a paper. The statement argues that the latter is the case, that how speech is interpreted is entirely down to the audience. One such case where speech was interpreted as dangerous only due to its audience, is with the song Helter Skelter. Paul McCartney intended his song to be about a circus ride, but Charles Manson interpreted the innocuous message as being about an impending race war, spurring him on to commit multiple horrific murders. So now we have to argue to the contrary and that there can be instances of dangerous speech. So if there are instances of dangerous speech, can you think of any examples? And think about why that became dangerous. So I think... When I did this, the, like the thing I came up, I came up with, was that in all these a lot of these cases I thought of, the speech is being made with the intent to incite violence. So, in this case, you know the speaker is using language and tone to convey a hateful intent, and their their, their intention is fully to convince or manipulate someone else to commit an act of violence. So I think in this case it's really unfair to blame people for reacting in a certain way if they are correctly interpreting the speaker's motive and the speaker's message you know they must sure they surely they have to take some responsibility you know you can't just blame the audience right because their intent matched with the final outcome so taking this into account have a go at writing your own paragraph in response to this and then i'll show you what i've done so this is my example paragraph. Speech is always made with intent of some manner. And when speaking, we use tone, delivery, and use of language to get that intent across. It is thus grossly unfair to assign no responsibility to the speaker in the case of dangerous speech, if they themselves sought to stoke violence and hatred with their language. 
Well, therefore, I, I believe dangerous speech does exist when there is violent intent from the speaker. So finally, we're told to answer this question. To what extent should the society put limitations on speech or text that it considers threatening? So this is an open question. And just to help you out, I put the arguments we used and talked about before. Um, as arguments for limitations and against limitations. However, I think this question also raises another argument you can talk about um, when it says about limitations on speech. So when you talk about limitations in speech, I immediately start to think about free speech and about the importance of free speech. So as an argument against limitations, you can discuss about why free speech should be preserved. But why should free speech be preserved? I think to answer this, you can, a good way to talk about it is think about an example where free speech isn't preserved and talk about why that's bad. So can you think of any historical examples? The one I used here, just for argument's sake, is the Soviet Union. So there they had censorship and they said that certain books and films were threatening because they considered those forms of speech threatening because they were too bourgeoisie or they were too decadent. And as a result, they had mass censorship and this infringed on individual liberty. So taking all of this into account now, have a go at writing your own concluding paragraph and then have a look at what I've done. So this is what I've done. Though as shown by domestic terror attacks, speech has the power to incite violence and cause a great deal of harm. I don't believe that society should limit speech. Not only can speech be misinterpreted as hateful, when that was never the intention, for example, with Helter Skelter. But a government could also choose to deliberately interpret speech as threatening if it opposed the state. Since the government would be in charge of enforcing the law, they could abuse their power to create mass censorship and stymie individual freedom, as in, in the USSR. Instead, we should encourage open debate where hateful ideology and dangerous speech could be challenged. Discussion should be promoted, not curtailed.